Welcome to Rising Tide Startups, where today's most exciting solopreneurs share their startup stories. They also deliver tangible strategies that they would implement personally if starting their business over today. Each episode is a startup masterclass. Make sure you take notes. Take it away, Kevin. This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups, and my guest today is Michael Mera. Michael, thank you for joining us on Rising Tide. Hey, Kevin. Thanks so much for being here. Um, really, really uh, excited to be on uh, your show today. Well, we, uh, we, we've we tried to coordinate our schedules around some really important meetings you had this afternoon, but share a little bit about Michael with our audience. Yeah, totally. So uh, right now I'm the CEO and founder of Entra. That's, that's usually where uh, I've been spending pretty much uh, most of my time these days. Uh, so we're a social network for entrepreneurs. We classify as the future of work. So that entails the creator economy, freelancers, solopreneurs, online businesses, there's so many different ways to uh, describe yourself as an entrepreneur now. And uh, we've built uh, this platform, which is a, a mobile and web app where it's specifically designed for entrepreneurs to come together, discuss like-minded things. You can create content, you can share ideas, you can ask questions, you can find co-founders, developers, investors, easier, faster, in a much more streamlined way. Uh, so that's uh that's all about us we're we're here to really support and help uh streamline entrepreneurship from a holistic perspective so i know all your work's online but where do you park yourself normally where, where are you on the planet? yeah so uh i'm actually down in florida right now uh, in panama city we uh we decided to get a place here for the a couple people on the team to come for for a couple months but we're based in pittsburgh uh so we built, I started the company in Pittsburgh. We expanded out to New York and we were doing a ton of events in, uh, across like 12 different cities. Uh, that's how we started growing the community. And then as we were building these events and building the community, we were building the technology in the background to connect everyone online. It just so happened that we were doing all this, you know, and then, you know, COVID uh, came along, which, um, you know, which really played into what we were doing uh, even more. So we've been doubling down really on, uh, you know, this virtual platform and the the app and the technology even more so over the last year. So in the world of these unicorn social networks, what causes an entrepreneur like yourself to wake up one day and say, hey, you know what, we're going to we're going to kind of niche down a little bit, but we're going to take on the Facebooks of the world or the, the other networks that that might serve in this same space. But so what, uh, what keeps them from going, oh, I think I'm going to do this now. What would keep for Facebook sure. from just saying, look, I just want to, I'm going to eat Entra for breakfast. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things where I, I strongly believe most social platforms are going to be in a way um, like, uh, I don't know the right word for it, but they're going to, they're basically going to get broken up into mm -hmm. smaller, more niche focused, um, I guess you could call it the unbundling, mm -hmm. in a sense, um, there's still always going to be uh, the large platforms, right? There, there's always going to be that presence. But with any social platform, there's always going to be new things that keep coming up. And this is why the large ones tend to acquire the small ones, and they grow into the new large ones, and then other small ones come. So there's a lot happening, uh, especially recently with Clubhouse and then Dispo mm -hmm. coming out. Um, these are two of the fastest growing social apps that anyone has seen in the last pretty much 20 years. So it's going to be really fascinating to see how these grow. We're, um, we're really focused specifically on becoming the new, younger, modern business platform. Uh, so we're specifically more focused on the professional side of things and being right. that uh, younger platform to LinkedIn. Uh, this industry specifically hasn't been disrupted you know, in, you know, pretty much ever LinkedIn has dominated the industry right, right. Uh, for the last 20 years. So we believe there's a big gap there and we're going to appeal much better to the younger audience and all the people getting into the workforce. And that's why, you know, we're really laser focused on entrepreneurship and with what we're doing, 
yes, we're a social platform, but we're also building software and tools within our platform as well. So it's, it's much more than just a typical uh, social platform where you post things and, mm -hmm. you know, share things and whatnot. There's a lot of other tools that we're building on top of it where you can host rooms and host events and, you know, get paid uh, to, to, to do, you can do paid events and all of that through a platform. You can get paid to produce content and you can also run paid communities within our platform. So there's a lot of other things that we're doing and how we're looking at it is we want to, we want our business model and our success to also you know, translate to the success of all the entrepreneurs within our community. So our whole focus is how can we help create more entrepreneurs? And then how can we help the existing entrepreneurs make more money? Right. I think I, uh, I was watching maybe another episode of previous interview you did. So am I right that your background is actually in engineering? Yeah. So I used to be a civil engineer uh, and then I got into real estate and then now I'm, I'm super heavy in tech. So uh, it's kind of been uh, a crazy last like six years now. So, I mean, that, that's almost like the old joke that says, well, I was an astronaut and I was a brain surgeon. <laughs> and I was, so, I mean, th those are, those are pretty disparate, you know, industries that, I mean, it's not like there's like a, a consistent, you know, growth pattern or, or a singular trajectory. I mean, I, I think that that's actually the DNA of an entrepreneur anyway. So it, it's probably a real microcosm of, you know, your, your life is a microcosm of the average DNA, you know, in an entrepreneur. But so walk us through what caused you to just wake up one day and go, you know, the world needs uh, the marriage of Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. A lot of it played into what I was going through when I left my job. Right. So the reason that I saw this happening and this kind of goes to the, the part of the, the DNA of an entrepreneur and inherently you're a problem solver. Right. So um, when I left my job, um, and got into all this, I didn't know anyone, I didn't know any other entrepreneurs, none of my family was entrepreneurs, none of my friends were entrepreneurs. So I was left to figure things out. And where does everyone go? They go to the internet, and you go through YouTube, and you ask Google, and you try to say, Hey, how do I start a business? Where are the entrepreneurs at? How do I find a co-founder? How do I get an investor? Mm. What the heck is an accelerator? What's an angel investor? Mm -hmm. Right? How do I raise capital? What's a, how do I build a website? Where does that go? What entity should I create? So I was going through all of this stuff, just like everyone does. And I was like, why the heck is there not a place that everyone knows to go to if they want to be an entrepreneur, right? Because after I learned how to start a business and how to build a website and how to, you know, do all the, like whatever email marketing, whatever else you, you want um, that, you know, is an online world, I've done pretty much it all. And once you learn what is really needed and once you do it, you're like, wow, this actually isn't that difficult. It's just the, the, there's a process and right. there's a system to it. But once you know how to do it, you can start a business again like that, right? Right. It's much but easier it's the like second this time, weird yeah. world that's like hidden. No one really learns about it in school. It's mm -hmm. only for the wealthy because you need a little bit of money and like, well, how does it work and how do you get started? So there, there was this whole kind of epiphany I had like, well, why why can't this be easier? Number one. And number two is where are all the entrepreneurs at? There's so many entrepreneurs out there now mm -hmm. and not just tech entrepreneurs or startup entrepreneurs, but freelancers, solopreneurs, e-commerce right. you know, sellers, podcasters, bloggers, you name it, content creators. There's so many people that classify themselves as an entrepreneur or creator or freelancer or whatever, right? In this new future of work and digital economy and creator economy, whatever you want to call it, gig economy, right? Where people want to be their own bosses. People want to do their own thing. They want to set their own hours. They want to work when they want to work. They want to work online. They want to be work flexibly. They want to be able to travel. They want to be able to pop around. 
to different cities or, you know, work from a co-working space or coffee shop and not have to go into office and dress up and wear a suit and tie. This is what the majority of people want. Right. Mm. And it's not necessarily for everybody, right? right. Because there's still a lot of value in having a, a day-to-day job. There's still a lot of value in having a corporate job, but um, for the people who do, why is it not more streamlined? Why is there not a place? So that, that was my whole thought process of it. And when I looked at the numbers and how many entrepreneurs there are now, uh, well over 500 million throughout the world. And I actually think the number's a lot higher because it's hard to actually, you know, uh, get the data unless someone creates an actual entity for it. So it's, um, it's, it's a lot higher than that if you add in freelancers and creatives and stuff. Um, but when you break that down and when I saw how many people were interested in just joining uh, a community, when I asked almost every single person was like, sure, that sounds awesome. I'd love to meet more entrepreneurs. Right. And when that started happening, when I started doing events and then people would were physically wanting to come just to network with other entrepreneurs. Right. And not just my events, but there was other tech events and other entrepreneur events going on. And then not just in Pittsburgh. And then when I went to New York, that's when we started you know, partnering with all of these co-working spaces and Microsoft and expanding to all of these different cities. And I was like, and then we started charging and then people would, would pay to come to meet other entrepreneurs. So when you, when I was looking at things from that perspective, it's like, well, if, if we can get people from all these different cities to physically come to a space and pay money to do that just to meet other entrepreneurs how many people could we get to just download a free app from their phone so they can network on their couch so it was translating then that experience into a digital format oh so that's when we started first yeah i mean we were we i had originally a membership site and a facebook group and all of that stuff we shifted out of that because I did not, I didn't want people to get comfortable with it. Not a lot of people really even like Facebook anymore and being on there right. um, and whatnot. And uh, if I would have known how long an app took to build, I probably would have kept it going for a little bit longer, <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, we shifted away from that and focused on the events because we could you know, grow our community that way. We could make money that way. We could build out our partnerships and, uh, and brand and everything that way. So we focused on that for, you know, uh, basically 2018, 2019. And then we rolled out the app, which, um, you know, what you were talking about, we, we publicly launched the app just in October in 2020, but we we were testing that for a while. We started building it in 2019, raised some capital, um, rolled it out the following year, tested it and then launched it in October now we're launching V2 um, here in the next few weeks, which is going to have all of these uh, rooms features, events features, and a lot of other updated designs and everything um, across the board. So we're super excited about that. Um, and we're just looking to start scaling this now as we grow. But yeah, it, it originally, to answer you your question and go back to this, it originally started just from my own desires to want to meet other entrepreneurs. And when I saw how important it was for other people uh the same as it was for me just to be around like-minded people um and when you looked at how many people there were in this industry now um you know there there was a huge opportunity that i saw to actually not just build a membership site or you know private community but an actual social network uh and, and an app for this so it's it's interesting that that uh, that you started online, but you I mean, well, really not online. I mean, it's uh, you're kind of kind of using the online platform of Facebook to kind of capture the the community, you know, or or kind of encapsulate the community. But that was was there an app in your mind from the very beginning, or did you uh, did you say okay, well, we have kind of migrated toward that? And we saw wow, this is very effective. We can't scale in-person events as nearly as easily as we can scale an app. So when, when in that process did that app light bulb come on? Yeah, it, it was, it was something I wanted for, for a while. The, the tricky thing was I had no idea how to build an app. I was not, I'm not a developer. I, 
had no connections to that. I had no access to capital. Um, and I didn't have a technical co-founder. So when you break, and these are things that a lot of founders go through, right? Right. Um, and, you know, hopefully Entra will help a lot of these people not have to deal with that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those things where I just had to figure out how can we show proof of concept? How can we make some money? How can we get the ball going um, with this community, whether it's online or in person, whatever. And some of these, there's a lot of no code platforms and membership sites out now that if they were out three years ago, when I was first getting started, I would have started building it, uh, our, our community on these. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The problem with, uh, a lot of it back then was there was nothing that sophisticated. There was mm -hmm. nothing that really that great. And the easiest thing was just a Facebook group. And, and that's cool, but a lot of people don't like Facebook groups. Um, and a lot of people aren't even on Facebook. Um, and, you know, you don't want everyone to get comfortable with just that. Uh, so it was one of those decisions that I had to make where I know we have to do this. Yes, we could probably make more money in the short term using just a, a membership site or a Facebook group and charging for that or whatever. But over the long term, it's not scalable. It's not an actual tech company and it's not going to be a billion dollar company. Right. So you, like I had to think of a different route to go to actually build the community in a way where we can generate revenue. And at, at the same time on the back end, build out the technology that's actually going to be uh, real technology and uh, where we own the data, we own the servers, we own the database, and we can scale this as fast as we need to and not rely on a third party software uh, for it. That, that at the turn of a dial can turn you off. Right. I mean, like, exactly. like your community could just go away like tomorrow right. if, if Facebook chose to. So, um, and I mean, the way you've described that and even some of the features that are coming in V2, I mean, this is not just your typical off the shelf, you know, social networking app that, you know, is coded by some guy over a weekend, you know, right. that, I mean, it's pretty sophisticated, you know, tech that you're trying to build. So uh, tell yeah. walk us through the kind of the launch of, of the app, you know, version one and, and you kind of, you, you, I know you had like a soft launch, you had some yep. uh, beta testers in there or whatever, then you did a hard launch. You said last fall, maybe October yeah. of last year. So what's been the kind of the, tell me that, about that hockey stick up to the right growth of users and, you know, since October and where are you now? Yeah, for sure. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to get it out. Right. And we wanted to see what, people wanted we wanted to see how they were using it and understand that so october was really let's get this base social platform out let's see how people use it let's see what feature what features that they want let's see how how they're using it, all of that right and um the 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 tricky thing was we launched ios android and web all together right and it was something that not even large companies do at the beginning. Um, understanding how tricky that is to manage now, prob I probably would have done things a little bit differently. But so since October, we've grown to now over like 27,000 users wow. and we haven't really done any marketing at all. So once this next version comes out, we've tweaked a lot of things. We fixed a lot of bugs. We listened to a lot of our users and added more features. Plus these uh, live rooms and these networking features and uh, all of this new stuff that's coming that is basically the hottest stuff out in the industry right now. Um, we're going to be starting to actually do marketing and advertising. So we'll be doubling that, you know, easily in the next month uh once we once we roll this out and start marketing it um and start actually pushing it because we've been we've been um you know it, it's out there but we haven't we've been pretty low-key about what we've been doing for the most part but we're gonna start uh we're gonna start really scaling here over the coming months uh and uh right now there's there's a lot of people scrambling um, since, and I, I'm not sure how familiar you are with clubhouse, but mm -hmm. they basically went from, 
zero to over a billion dollar valuation in less than a year. Um, and they have over 10 million users now. And, and they had a really unique approach too about the, it's like a scarcity model of, of membership. Like you can't be here until somebody invites you. Right. You know, and it's like everybody was scrambling for invites, you know, two months ago or you know, a yeah. month ago. And now I like, I've got invites sitting in my box. I can't give away. So. Yeah. Everyone's got invites. Um, they're, and, and that's the thing, right? Because they are just on iOS, they, they've limited themselves in some capacity. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, they are the classic Silicon Valley social platform. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing about how all the social networks have come to be over the last 20 years is they've all come from this small area in the world, Facebook, Twitter, like Instagram, they've all come from the Valley, right? And because they understand the how to do it, right? And if you look at how most of them do it and roll things out, um, and, and, and their investors have a lot to do with it as well because they bring their network onto the platform. But they started it the best way, meaning that they got high level people, celebrities, very, you know, top, top notch uh, people in tech on there that made people want to be on there as well. They got the buzz going on Twitter and then the snowball effect started happening. Um, we, you know, we have to do things a little bit differently. You know, we have to be more strategic with it. At the same time, we aren't building this for the entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. We're building this for everybody else. Mm -hmm. If you look at where all the venture capital dollars raised are going, where the investors are, where all of that is, the vast, vast majority of all venture capital dollars that get raised and deployed come from the Bay Area, meaning that they all give money to each other and they all invest in each other and then they, they reinvest and they in each burn other, through money and then they all other. make <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what happens is what's happened over the last 20 years is all the entrepreneurs outside of the Bay area are the ones who really need the network, mm -hmm. right? They're the ones who don't have access to capital, who don't have access to a good network, who don't have access to resources and stuff like that. So that what we're doing could never get, could never have been built within the Valley because it's not a problem for them. They have the network that mm. everyone wants. That's so interesting. Um, when you look at it from that lens, we're, we're trying to basically democratize access to entrepreneurship and uh, break down all these barriers. But there's a lot happening right now. Uh, Twitter just rolled out. They just announced today that uh, they're going to have Twitter spaces open for Android users to listen. And then soon they'll be opening it for Android users to also host spaces. Instagram just rolled out live rooms yesterday for uh, live stream up to four people. So everybody is scrambling for this. We're the first company that actually has rooms working on, uh, on web. Um, and uh, we're going to be rolling it out on a iOS and Android uh, here in the next couple of weeks. So we're technically going to be the first company out there that has these audio rooms working on cross platform on any device, um, which will be pretty crazy. I mean, the advantage though, I think to your platform versus say a Twitter or Instagram or even Facebook is yours really does have a very specific purpose. Exactly. It's a clear, you know, well-defined avatar. It's not like everybody in the world, you know, like Twitter, like Instagram, like Facebook. I mean, they almost have to big deal. Everybody's on the platform, but how in the world would you find each other? You know, I mean, it's, it's like a needle in a haystack, you know, almost a <laughs> pursuit of finding each other. But so I, I'm going to shift gears here just a little bit. I'm, I'm very interested in, in your answer to this question. So you and I are going to jump on an elevator. We're going to go up about 10 floors. And this is not your typical elevator pitch. I'm going to refine it just a little bit because as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, I'm trying to get in the mind of, of you know, a, a future user. Tell me how you're different than LinkedIn. Are you just LinkedIn light? No, not, not really. So um, <laughs> the easiest way to explain it. I didn't mean it, that pejoratively. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the easiest way to explain it is, when you go to LinkedIn, 
the majority of people who are going there are either using it as and the majority of their users are either using it because they're in sales, they're a recruiter, or they're an active job seeker, right? Um, or they're just going to look somebody up just because they met them or they want to look them up, right? It, it's it's mostly a people directory. If you look at their pitch deck, if you look at LinkedIn's pitch deck, they don't call themselves a social network. They call themselves a people directory, right? That now it kind of shifted to a professional network and a, more of a social platform. They're diving deeper to get into content because, you know, finally they realize that content is important. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but maybe some people do, but very, nobody goes to LinkedIn to start a business. No one goes there to be an entrepreneur. No one's like, where should I go to start a business? Oh, dude, go to LinkedIn. Nobody has ever said that ever, right? <laughs> if they say, oh, I'm looking for a job. Oh, go to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. That that's, that's the real difference. It's if you're looking for a job, career, whatever, go to LinkedIn. That's what it's built for, right? If you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to start a business, go to Entra. That's what it's for. So it's a totally different, um, yes, it's similar in the sense that we're both business networks, but it's the, it's two different types of people, right? It's, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a stable career, conservative job, salary, nine to five lifestyle corporate LinkedIn. I'm looking to be an entrepreneur, freelancer, startups, tech, whatever, Entra. So are, are transactions, do they happen within the platform itself? So if I'm looking for some startup capital, does that happen within the platform or is it just the connections made and then the, all the finances happen outside? Just the connections right now. Um, soon the first transactions that will be happening will be if you're a content creator, you're an event organizer, you're creating uh, a, a commute, your own sub community or niche community within Entra, you'll be able to connect your Stripe account. You'll be able to charge people for, you know, if you want to do a paid room or paid event, you can charge tickets for that. If you, uh, if, if you're a consultant or a coach, and people want to book a call with you and you want to charge them for your time, people can go onto your profile, click a button. It opens up your calendar, just like Calendly in a way. You're right. You can book a call with someone right there and do everything, do the call also on Entra in a private one-on-one -on -one room. And then you'll get paid for that. Wow. Right. Eventually you'll also get paid for your content in a way that, as you're scrolling through the content, if you really, really like someone's post, instead of just giving them a like, or we use upvote, instead mm -hmm. of giving them an upvote, you can actually gift them. Like, it's almost like Patreon points, type thing. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And then people on their profile could have paid content. So private content, and then you pay a subscription to view their private content on Entra. So almost every platform is going to be not only rolling out rooms, but these paid content features, right? Twitter just announced the super follow, which is basically the same thing as what I'm describing. Um, so there's so many of these uh, companies that are starting to get into this. Um, and it's just going to be a scramble to get there, right? Everyone is, there is, I've never seen so much happening at the same time mm. than right now. It's absolutely crazy. Everyone's going at these, this like group live streaming stuff and audio and everyone's going at these creator tools and paid content tools. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, so we're focused on, appealing and being the most trusted source and platform for entrepreneurs just because it's in our branding it's everything and these other platforms are so general or so big have yeah. such little brand loyalty that we believe that we'll be able to come out on top from because of that 
Is there a, is there some form of vetting process within Entra with, I mean, are you rating each other? Are you, you know, is there an application to get inside? I mean, what, what's, how do you keep, you know, the, the charlatans from just kind of running, running the system here? For sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So, and the, this is a problem with almost every platform, especially Clubhouse right now, because it's an audio format and, you know, anyone can start a room on anything and, yeah. you know. How do you monitor that? Yeah, exactly. So how we're approaching it is we want to, any anyone's free to join, sign up, you know, all of that, right? We are limiting, you have to apply to be able to host rooms, right? So hosting a room is totally free, just like Clubhouse, except we're not just letting everyone host mm -hmm. rooms, right? Because we believe that you should be qualified to teach or share knowledge in right. a lot of ways, or be a good moderator in host, right? Those are both two different skill sets. You, you should be able to host rooms and host events if you're a good organizer and you're a good host and you're a good moderator, even if you're not an expert in that industry, right? Just like news anchors or podcast hosts and stuff like that. It's a skill set that you have to host this podcast really well and ask good questions, right? So you don't necessarily have to be the expert in whatever, but you have to you know be able to run the show really well. So how we're approaching it is um, quality over quantity, right? We want this to be a place where the majority of the content is at a magnitude, uh, is at such a higher level than any other platform um, that nobody else is going to want to go anywhere because what's going to happen because there's so much content and information out there on the internet right now, everything is going to be about con or quality and curation going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. So it's, well, I don't need to see a, a, like a million courses on how to start a podcast. I want to see the best, you know, course or the best video on how I should start my podcast from a person who has a great podcast. Right. <laughs> um, right. And, and it's just, how can I pull that thing? Right. Because YouTube has so much content on it, you know, usually the good content filters to the top anyway, but the amount of videos on YouTube right now is there's no reason for that. There's absolutely no reason <laughs> for there, for anyone to be able to upload anything that they want um, at all times. And, and, you know, that's word for them. But in, in my opinion, like the future is, is more about, how can we curate the and and deliver the highest quality content and all that? So what what we're focused on is not necessarily quality and just letting everyone post as much as they want or host as many rooms and all this other stuff. It's how can we let you know every, and everyone will be able to post, but we're probably going to be limiting that to maybe only a couple of times a day or uh, a few times a week unless you're verified or an Entre Pro user or something like that. So what this does is it makes people think about what they're posting more and make sure they're posting quality so that they don't waste their posts and don't just like blurt out something like on Twitter, just because they felt, you know, we like, you know, they felt something about they had a, uh, I mean, some people know. are crazy on Twitter. Is that, is that what you're yeah, trying to say? I mean, <laughs> so we're in, and, and we're really, really focused on removing any, uh, trolls, any, uh, spam, any of that. Right most of these other social platforms don't care about spam. And right. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it's getting crazy. It's getting even worse, but they don't care about that because you're getting a notification that you have a message, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a robot spam, whatever. And then you're opening the app up to check your message. Well, it's spam. So delete, but you're on the app now and oh there's another thing that someone yep. liked my post and now you just spent another half an hour on their app so exactly. their whole goal is how can we get people back into the app as much as possible well that right now is the best way to do that is push notifications right so how can we get people to get more push notifications well let people get messages from whoever they want. And as long as the value is there with the rest of the platform, people are going to, you know, not care so much about getting spam every now and then, but 
um, it's still a big issue. So we're focused on eliminating that we're, you know, with our, you know, how we go about messaging and stuff. So you can't message anyone until you're connected with them similar to LinkedIn. Mm. Um, so that, that takes away from a lot of that as well. And then within our community guidelines, we are going to remove any content that doesn't fit within entrepreneurship, business, personal development, tech, innovation, or health and wellness. So if it's on religion, politics, whatever, we have the ability to remove that. So we want to create a safe space for people to know, hey, I'm only going to see you know, entrepreneurship, business, innovation, you know, really interesting thoughts on Entra. And I'm never going to see political stuff, religious stuff, trolling, whatever happened in, you know, this movie or TV show, because there's a lot of other places to talk about that stuff. Yep. And there are a lot of other places that are annoying that, that you can talk about that stuff. So yeah, I'd, I, I would come here because to avoid that not not to you know exactly. i'm not going to miss that I'm, I'm coming here to avoid it so walk yeah. us walk us through the business model so what like if i what i mean you, you kind of talked you know in in many different spaces about the value but like really drill down on the business model you know the user experience you know of of joining this community and what i could expect for sure. Yeah. So the, the whole goal was to create uh, a free mobile and web app where anyone that has access to the internet could get all the basic resources and a supportive community to be an entrepreneur or to grow as an entrepreneur or an individual, right? That w- that's been, that's the underlying premise for what we're, we're focused on. So Entra will always like will always have a free version and it will always have all the basic things that you need, right? For uh, our, then there's going to be a couple business models built into this, right? How we make money right now is mostly through uh, event ticket sales and sponsorships and, and all of that stuff. That's we're we're not really going to be hosting our own events anymore. And we're going to let the community host the events. Right. And we're going to focus mostly on just doing one monthly pitch competition. So we'll still generate, you know, revenue from sponsors from that. And we will do sponsored posts and, you know, some, some different advertising on the platform, but we don't want to build in a whole backend ad platform and just let anyone run an ad on anything like Facebook and all these other platforms. It's going to be more curated sponsorships with software companies, businesses that we know actually add value to our community. Right. So that's kind of the first thing. The uh, current Entre Pro membership gets uh, our, our pro members access to over really like $40,000 worth of deals and discounts with our 80 plus partners. So we have partnerships with like Canva, Zendesk, G Suite, Dropbox, uh, TopTow, you name it, Zendesk. Um, that people can save money as they start their business. We have partnerships with all the uh, like law firms, accounting firms, banks, all that stuff. So all the stuff that you need as an entrepreneur, you can save money, right? Basically with this, right? And the point of EntrePro is to save entrepreneurs time, to save them money and to help them make money, right? So they're saving money with the deals and discounts. They're gonna save time with our new one-on-one networking feature, which will allow you to click a button and you'll be able to get matched with another user online instantly for a one-on-one call with them, right? So you can, if you want to network and actually meet people, how do you do that right now? There's, there's really no way, right? To actually just like click a, like there's not a, there's no way on the internet to click a button and meet a new person that's somewhat interested in the same things as you. Mm -hmm. That's what, we're doing with, with, uh, with our, our one-on-one networking feature. So that saves people time because they don't have to go on LinkedIn or go on social and send people a DM and follow up on email and try to set up a call with them and schedule a Calendly link and do a zoom or Google meet link and then follow up via email to have a conversation, right? They can click a button and meet someone on the platform. So that saves them time. The deal saves them money. And then the third thing is how do they, how can we help them make more money, 
right? And that's where the other things that I was talking about earlier come in, where you as a creator can host paid rooms, paid events, you can get paid for your content, you can do uh, premium content, you know, on Entra yourself. And then you could also, uh, we're eventually going to roll out paid communities as well. So you can set up your own community within Entra on, you know, podcasters or, you know, real estate. The monthly or membership side. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you want to run your own community and a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, are, are doing that and making good right. money, whether that's on, right. you know, they have a stock community or, uh, uh, you know, social media, social media community or whatever that may be. So, you know, the, the third is empowering people and how can we help people make more money as entrepreneurs? And those are really the three things. So, you'll get the ability to do all of those with Entre Pro, right? That's just built into our thing. And for Entre Pro, we wanted that to be something that almost every single person can afford no matter what. Right now, it's only $12.99 a month, right? It's like Netflix, Amazon Prime, all yeah. of that, yeah. right? We want this to be something where it's a no-brainer for almost every single entrepreneur to be part of where they can meet new people all the time, they can save a ton of money, and they can also make money instead of using three to five different softwares out there and spending hundreds of dollars a month to, you know, do virtual events or to uh, do a paid, you know, call or whatever that may be. Um, we're going to streamline all of the software into the the membership so they can just use Entra and get all of those things that they're using anyway uh, to make money and also you know, save money and time. You know, I have, uh, like I told you earlier, I've been doing this for three years. I've had, we've had a weekly interview uh, of a startup founder somewhere on the globe for three years. And the whole ethos behind rising tide startups is, is really helping all boats rise in rising tide. This is non-monetized. I do it because I love to do it. I, I, mean, I have a day job that pays my bills. So this is just something I, I do on the side and just I'd love, love to that. see the connections and networks and, and things that happen. But I've got to tell you, I think this is the first time in three years that I, I am talking to a startup founder that I'm not just rooting for them and their thing, you know, I'm rooting for this globally because I want it to, I mean, I see, I see the need. I mean, you, you, you didn't have to convince me. I mean, all, all you've done is reaffirmed, you know, the need, because I, I mean, I've always thought even in the last few years, this thing, what is the, the next LinkedIn disruption type, you know, situation? Because, you know, Uber had Lyft. I mean, there, there's always been something that's kind of tried to intersect this. And I like the distinction you made between the, you know, kind of the people directory versus really kind of a one-stop shop, you know, resource library connection, networking opportunity, you know, way to, to raise funds, make money, you know, and do your thing online. But yep. uh, man, I, I am, I am a, a cheerleader of, of what you got going on. And, and I'm really anxious to see what V2, you know, when it rolls out, you said it's, it's like in the next few weeks. Yeah, we're, so we've, we've already been uh, testing it. Uh, there's a few more tweaks. Web is pretty much done, mm -hmm. um, but we got we to gotta tweak a few more things on mobile. But um, yeah, you'll be, seeing, you'll be seeing that in the next few weeks and, and definitely launching uh, publicly in, in April. So um, it's, it's exciting. It might be perfect timing. I mean, the, the podcast episode we're doing today may go live right about that time. So that, it, that's it, perfect a, then. Yeah. Great timing. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you, you're going to tell me what week you want this to go live and we'll, we'll make it happen. But, That'd be uh, perfect. Um, anything that uh, we touched on a lot of things today, but is there anything that I haven't asked you about? You just kind of like to wrap us up with today and then, you know, maybe, maybe do your very best. This is how you can contact me, but throw a little sales pitch in there for, for users to, to sign up. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, now this has been great. I've, I've enjoyed this a lot. Uh, there's nothing more that I enjoy doing than talking to other entrepreneurs and talking about this stuff. So, uh, really appreciate it. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, right now, anyone can sign up on Entra. It's just joinentra.com, just spelled exactly like entrepreneur. 
uh, and anyone, you know, or they could download the app on iOS or, or the Android stores and, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm obviously always on there. You can, you know, you'll be able to find me very easily and shoot me a message on there or wherever else that, that you want. And we're always trying to help as many entrepreneurs with whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, you know, whether that's get started or raise capital or whatever, we do a ton of office hours with angel investors, VCs, we have monthly pitch competitions that anyone can apply for. We give away thousands of dollars every month for entrepreneurs. We do a ton of stuff on other platforms like TikTok and Clubhouse and Instagram too, to help, you know, promote entrepreneurs and whatnot. So always here to support anyone who's, who's listening and, and needs help or struggling or trying to figure things out or just wants to connect and, and talk more and learn more. But we're always down to, you know, collaborate with people. And we definitely want everyone, especially right now, the, a lot of our users, a lot of our early users are basically leveraging Entra to grow their own following on, on this platform. So some of our users have thousands of connections and are, they're building their own kind of brand on here and, and making a lot of uh, connections with this. So it's something that um, we're really doing a lot of to like streamline this and make it as possible for entrepreneurs to grow whatever it is that they want. Well, the best place to find you, you, you mentioned the website, join Entra, J O I N E N T R E.com. And this has been Michael Mara, M A R R A. It's been, it's been a pleasure to have you, Michael. I really appreciate you taking the time and just kind of sharing the vision behind Entra, this, this, kind of business entrepreneur social network that you've created and, and much broader than that. But just thank you again for just taking the time and just really helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Michael, have a great week. You too, Kevin. Thanks so much. Another episode in the books. We hope you heard some great takeaways. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review on iTunes and YouTube. As always, thanks for listening to Rising Tide.